Semino with Alessia Cavatori and myself, Paul Sawyer. Um, it's primarily Alessio, given he's the, uh, the bolt action game designer. But as I run the, the Warlord Studio uh, and work closely with Alessio, you get to bounce ideas off us as well. Is there anything you wanted to kind of lead with Alessio, or are you just questions from the floor? Well, we, uh, I think when they asked what the seminar was about, I was like, um, national special rules for bolt action and how entertaining it is to write them, because <laughs> it's normally the most entertaining part of the, any seminar is about how do you write rules for you know all different nationalities, particularly as you know we live in a very sensitive environment, so it's kind of like, right, how do you write that kind of stuff, which is still fairly close in history, and not offend people, or not offend people too much. Kind or of offend the right people. <laughs> or you know, offend some people. Know. So, so it's that kind of thing, which I, you know, it was, it's always a tricky one, every time we do a new supplement or something like that, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, so I was almost like doing a workshop and uh, going through all the nationalities and uh, here are a few proposals for special rules, titles for special rules. And then we can also go into the, how the special rule would work. Uh, of course, if you have other questions, of course, it, nothing to do with any of this, we, we can also take questions, I think. Uh, <coughs> uh, if they're about product, I think this man is much more informed than I am. If it's about rules, then I'm, I'm, I'm the man. So. Yeah, don't come to me for rules. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, so uh, we could start with Germans. The Germans. Uh, what, if you title for uh, German special rules, what, what, if you were to write a, a German army list, German army list for for people to pick an army from, what title of rules would you use? And if everything goes silent, it means that it really is terrible because it could you know, fear of offending people straight away. We use the Arizona. <laughs> the youths of war is over. <laughs> and You're what, a what were the rules? and bitter, yes. So the unit has to stop yeah, immediately. Yeah. Right. What would that rule do? I've not got that far yet. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be cool. As, as the enemy makes a move, like an ambush, you can interrupt and go, Papier and bitter! And you have to stop. I bet fell gendarmes very, very useful. Fell <laughs> gendarmes? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That one? Are you sure it's carrots? Uh, it's after the, uh, the Germans uh, to a word leaked the information that carrots make you see best in the dark to hide radar. So this, you could say they have a, a disadvantage to scouting. They see better in the dark, so in night fights. It's, it's, carrots. Uh, they say, are you sure it's carrots? You Pointing sure? out the how ridiculous a lie it is. <laughs> so they get a disadvantage to scout. Extra spotting in, um, in night fights, yes. Yeah, yeah, good now. Any more on the Germans? Come on, there must be loads for the Germans. <laughs> See, uh, Sorry. there's always that barrier. It's yeah, a bit, it's yeah. a bit, a bit edgy this, this, this seminar, isn't it? When we get to the Italians, we'll be fine because yeah. uh, I can, I can <laughs> everybody, everybody hates those. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's at least one Italian in the audience, so be careful. Yep. Uh, Anyone German maybe rules? Maybe extra vehicle rules. That's almost a serious answer. We don't want, we don't want any serious proposal. Really. You're in the wrong just silly, just silly <laughs> Yes, that could have been a. It would just be titled Schnell, Schnell, Schnell. Yeah. Schnell, Schnell, yeah, Raus, Raus. Yes, yes, Raus, Raus. All right, make him note there. Raus, Raus. When we. Uh, oh, so beat is nice. Complete aside, when we um, first started Warlord, one of the first, th one of the early releases we had was the uh, SS squad disembarking at the sides of uh, Hanamek, uh, which we t entitled Rouse, because we thought that was absolutely the right thing to do. I remember getting a rather irate email from uh, uh, a, a German customer, uh, how, how stupid that was, and it should be called Absitzen, because everybody's heard of that. Yeah, they're easy to pronounce as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, you, there's always someone. So Rouse was wrong because? Um, I didn't know why I stopped, right. I stopped so reading. It was a long time ago, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely something like exit or something. Out. Out, out, out. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, could a rule be for late war Germans to do with their defective ammunition or something like that? So they have some kind of like. Because there was a lot of sabotage late mm -hmm. war. Yeah. Um, because so it could be that, that, you know, I don't know, when they roll one, something happens. Yeah, the, the, we call it clickbait. 
<laughs> the penetration of the of the of the ammunition getting worse and worse. Uh, yes, yes. Compromise all the armor as well. What about one called We Have Ways of Making You Torch, which allows one German unit to start in advance from information they've received? Make models of each star pack. I was thinking there's of the star pack module, but then I was like, no, if, you, if you're talking about rules specifically. Yeah, yeah, well, you could go with models, suggestions for models. I think uh, mm. Paul is very sensitive to those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you could make them, base them on uh, Hello Hello. <laughs> 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 I'm the Gestapo guys from Hello Hello. I do have, I do have to say, I do have to say that we, we have got the license to do models for our lower low. Oh, you have to. Please. However, what a mistake to make her. <laughs> in, today's, in today's day and age, it's probably not going to go down so well. So oh, we're, we're, well. We are oh, still, get away with it. We're still arm wrestling over it. Now, all you've got to do is release a little thing at the front of it that says this box may be offensive, but with everybody. Time. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> Disney do. I guess the solution, that's the solution, isn't it? Yeah. If you offend Everybody is like offending nobody. Equal everybody. opportunity offender. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. I just want to. I just want one model of Vicky Michelle. I don't mind if it's not the best. <laughs> <laughs> I want that to write it. It's a very Catalina. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? My in, the, in the middle, in the middle of occupied France, yeah. he goes. <laughs> There's a British. Campaign Good morning. Surrender? <laughs> no, 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 no. We have surrender to you. Special objective mission: get the Madonna with the fight appendages. Yes. Follow the Madonna with the big boobies. Follow the Madonna. What have I done? What have I done? Oh, that was that was kind of the point. The most offensive yeah. seminar ever. This will not be published, though, I think. <laughs> the general with the two badges in his hat. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, okay. Let's move on from the Germans then. Yeah, uh, Americans. Not. Oh, I was only asking. <laughs> <laughs> Nuts, that's a good one. Yes, yes. Nuts, some kind of, um, yeah. Uh, a re roll, a fail. Overpaid over sex and over here. Overpaid over sex and over here, yes. What would that be? That they're oversexed, overpaid, and over here. <laughs> I've done no rules. I'm in that man's camp. Didn't get there yet. Overpaid, overpaid, oversexed. Sorry, uh, oversexed over here could be a nutritional thing. So you, you lose a few men whenever you're, you know. So it's a bit like uh, foot. To STDs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To STDs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they can only, or they can only advance. They can't run because they're all because. Right. the chafing. Yeah. Yeah. As, as, as little Timmy's playing, he goes, "Mummy, what's an ST?" Yes, uh, it's uh, something to do with World War Two acronym, like Fubar, STD. Yes. Um, Yes, yeah, so there could be something to do with friendly fire, I was thinking here. Oh, air strikes that kind of like level the whole field, both sides. Kind of like, like, yeah, right, we can you can both yeah. sides. Uh, what do you buy the mouse? <laughs> you get, because uh, Disney bump, bump, bank the mouse. Uh, oh, ammunitions at the time that you could say, uh, you could say they get an extra bomb or something. With the power of Walt Disney behind them. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So we could lean into American culture and have all the cowboy diplomacy. Yes, well, where are you? The last one of cowboys is the uh, quick draw of war. Quick draw? Because it was always thought to be that the only way to get US Air War with the pistol side on to go for the uh, Italian selection. It was all US Air War with that side on. Ah, big knot, big knot. Side on. If they, if they carry two as well, that could be. <laughs> <laughs> you can equip your models with two. <laughs> the firepower goes up a lot. Not the accuracy. <laughs> I just lost a tooth, so I'm probably even more difficult to understand than normal. Which is hey? just, I just. Uh, <laughs> what? I just. Exactly. <laughs> so it's not only the accuracy, but also the anchor. One less tooth. Okay, anything else for the Americans? Late again. Late again. Oh, Start on turn, turn two, two or turn three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. The we battle. Have... No, the battle starts on turn two or three. Well, you know that goes well with the French. We're going ahead a bit. Where actually they only play turn one. So you actually you could, you could switch. You could switch army. We're not going to be able to show this, are we? <laughs> no. 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 I just say try to offend everybody. Of course you can. You just put a disclaimer at the beginning of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. What about one just due to the numbers of the Americans? Like, so they just get, much like the British, just an extra unit or an extra 
Like the, like the Soviets. Yeah, it's more, more of a Soviet Chinese. Yeah, the British getting free Indian. I think having having different, like like the British have lots of different rules for each, you know, they can, they can basically choose a different, I feel like that, that would be great for each of the different um, things. Is that what you're looking to do? Well, I mean, the that's a great idea because it allows people to kind of pick their the theme and so it, normally what happens in, in I, so there's a, there's, you know, there's two types of gamers. There's the gamers where that's great because they pick this or that because it's colorful and fun and entertaining. But obviously, if you if you're a tournament player, normally you end up always picking the same one or two. You know, analyze and go, "This is the one you take," kind of thing. Uh, interesting idea. It just had flexibility like to the Italians or to the uh, the, the Americans. It, oh, it, it took quite a lot longer than I expected for the Italians to come up. <laughs> usually, usually the first thing we talk about is, "Oh, oh why are the Italian rule so bad?" Oh, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. The that that choosing of the you know different uh, rules mm. yeah it could work could work because you could have Kentucky regiments you could have you know the, the rules for say for instance the big red one or whatever they could have their own set of rules because they were very dynamically different cultural um, you know sort of ideals buffalo soldiers for instance could have their own rules this side yeah this yeah. side definitely it, it is dangerous on the other end in terms of game balance is dangerous in terms of actual and uh, not offending people like what well, the opposite of what we're doing here is actually very good which I think is why Rick did that with the British because he didn't want to get into the well who's tougher the New Zealanders or the Australians or mm -hmm. uh, he didn't want to have that argument so it's like you decide you, you pick the one you want for the nationality you want for the troops you want for you know Indians Gurkhas whatever I don't know Gurkhas had their own rules but yeah so it is more politically correct in a way because kind of go, we don't make a choice, you make the choice. It would also mean that the Russian, say people collecting the game in America would have a much more reason to collect their region's troops. And they, they, you, you'd end up in a far more sort of, they're quite tribal everywhere. So it would, it, would, it would end up being much more sort of like, oh, I'm going to bring my South Carolinians against your, you know, you can, you can play that. It's, it's certainly worth it. Um looking into, and obviously when we're talking about the Commonwealth, you're talking about very, very different people. Absolutely. Uh, so, so, so that's the kind of the rationale there within the British Commonwealth. But to do the same for um, Americans, and you can follow it out to the, the Soviets as well, yeah, Siberians. And it is a bit East. more subtle, isn't it, in the yeah. American guys, because they are American. The, 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 dis the distinction is less prominent than you know from from a British guy to an Indian guy. It is not like you know I'm from Ohio, you're from South Carolina. You know. That kind of thing might be better served coming through in campaign weeks, where it's about a particular theatre and a location rather than on mass across all of the uh, options in an army. Yeah, sounds a bit uh, dangerous. I have to say. I just I just feel like like the big red one would have an extra you you know because they were so numerous you, you, you could have a Maybe make the extra unit argument for the big red one, or free unit argument for the big red one. But I think, and with Paul, that, that's very specifically a formation. Yeah, no, no, I agree. So, no, I think yeah. you're right with the campaign. Yeah. Okay. Any more for the Americans? Where's your bank, Yang? <laughs> Where's the what? Where's your bank, bank Yang? The biggest thing America's brought into the world is money. Like it's Kelly's like heroes, history. effectively. <laughs> where, where is the bank? <laughs> so, oh, Kelly's heroes. So it's like, maybe if it's over three units, you represent that, you just say that you get like 50 points, 350 points spent on a unit, but represents the extra money. Yeah. More gear, more gear than ever. Mm -hmm. You have to spend it on stuff rather than a man, because otherwise it's like Soviets and stuff. Yeah, upgrading gear. <laughs> okay, um, happy to continue? I mean, let's continue with this, yes. Uh, British. Oh dear. Thai for tea and biscuits. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Advancing towards it. Yeah, yeah. Bravo After this, tea. Remove one pin. <laughs> After tea, we'll, we'll, have, we'll advance. They can't be activated during round three. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for tea and tea. Tea, <laughs> tea. tea break. Tea break. <laughs> or, or your tank, your one guy has to get out, and if he gets shot by a sniper, your tank can't operate. Because it can't make tea anymore. Yeah, because it's yeah. only later on. 
facility to make tea in the tank yep. so that you, you didn't get shot, right? Okay. Add my Jack Churchill. We, we, We've got Jack we Churchill. Have him, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it there yeah, with his longbow, his sword? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's there. <laughs> yes, adapting the rules for longbow <laughs> and both that was interesting. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, that's. Any more for the British? And not just the British, but also the British Commonwealth. Commonwealth. Yeah. So if you want to have a pop at the Aussies, feel free. That's the pop. It's your round. <laughs> it's your round, freedom. Infighting or something. Like if you have like, New Zealanders and Australians, they start fighting each other. And... Yeah, it's your round. You, you, more enthusiastic, but less accurate. <laughs> Could there be a competitive rule that came in? So, for instance, if you fielded a mixed units thing, say Gurkhas and Canadians and things, there's a competitive negative and positive that then hits because they're wanting to outdo each other. Outdo each other in, in yeah. battle. So, if you want to do that kind of, oh, I'm going to, you know, kind of fleece my, meta my thing full of, you know, powerful units, actually it works negatively. You end up with, with them hitting a Competition. kind of wall of going, Oh no, they, they don't like them. And they're going to work with those. Is, a, is an Aussie unit going to take orders from a British officer? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Team Ryan, it's your round. Any more for the plucky Brits? Don't tell them your name, Pike. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is and that would. Don't panic. That could be at the start of the battle when you're putting out your uh, units for the first turn. You put something down and then, oh, mysteriously, this unit of infantry isn't the same unit of infantry that you thought it was, Mr. German, when you were putting your troops over there. You can make one swap. Don't tell them your name, Pike. It's a good title. Where did you have lucky top on? Well, maybe just an Australian rule where the Australians get plus one morale when they're fighting against uh, Japanese because obviously they were they were afraid of them invading the home island so they were fighting. Again, back with a serious suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are you thinking, <laughs> ma'am? <laughs> I'll put in one silly, one serious. That's good. It's a good balance. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm called, I'm from Canada, eh? It's where I learnt you can field American troops as Canadian because a lot of American and Irish troops uh, enlisted in the Canadian Army uh, before the war began to fight the British. Yes, yes, I do, I do mix up those nationalities a bit as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If you mix in a Canadian squad, you have to have a special rule called Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Most polite troops ever. Unless you're the SS. Okay, let's move on from the Brits. Soviets. Soviets. Target rich environment, this one. <laughs> just have a unit called like tractor factory soldiers. So rather than going out in the tank, they just go out. They're <laughs> uh, only a melee unit, obviously. Yes, whatever the classic unit with one man has a rifle, and the other man doesn't, and can all have a has a bullet. Yes. Yes, one carry the ammunition, and when the man carrying the the, the rifle is killed, not if. I like the the, the commissar says when the man. It's a, it's a good morale for the troops. Isn't it? Didn't say who buy either, do we? <laughs> uh, uh, Red Avenger. Uh, it's a uh, uh, have have uh, you begin to pretend one of your units is a sniper to your opponent when it's not really. It's based on the. At a lot of the sniper units that were uh, created for propaganda value that never actually existed for the Soviets, like a, a very famous. Okay, like a propaganda oh. mega super thing that actually doesn't exist. Yeah. Like a super weapon. Yeah, it does it, uh, say uh, your. So you, it, you, you announce it and shirt the work, uh, so it doesn't actually e, uh, always feel, 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 go out, uh, feel out. Like you, you deploy five snipers, but only one of them is actually a sniper, the other ones yeah. are. 
fear of Zygons. I thought you were going to super soldier territory, you know, when you said Red Avenger, I was like, no, like a, you know, with a, a shield and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nickname the star. They gave, it's a nickname they gave one of the uh, female snipers who was a daughter of one of the party members. She, there's actually no evidence she ever actually served. Right. Yeah, legends, made up stuff. Yes, it's the words. Pro good propaganda, uber propaganda thing. Propaganda. Uh, why don't they have a defensive rule? Because obviously, um, uh, after Barbarossa, they had huge amounts of time set defensive, so when playing a defense attack a defender of mission, they get to lay out like camp traps and trenches. So many, much like the Italian defensive rule. Right. Again, I think that falls in more into the campaign book territory, which is mm -hmm. kind of objective rather than national. Yeah, and actually from experience of that particular the Italian rule about the attacker defender, the fact that they have the extra emplacements, is one of the rules that gets criticized most because A, if you're not playing an attacker defender scenario is a bit old and also relies on having a piece of terrain, also yeah, so it's not a very popular rule for a generic army, you know, pick up pick, pick and play game well actually for scenarios is yeah. Again, if you go for the rule earlier about them having multiple different things and you pick and choose what goes in your fluffy arm if you're particularly fond on playing defensive missions. In a, yeah, would you do that in, a, in an army, in a tournament? I mean, to, basically to, to the level of being the army special rule so that people can take that stuff in a tournament, it becomes a bit tricksy, I think. Because it also it involves terrain. The terrain is always a bit strange to because people build terrain in different ways and looks different and uh, so introducing that into a normal list is a bit you're challenging some of the more vague areas of wargaming where people can write yeah this this terrain piece is you know yay big and this tall and mine isn't and yeah it's a bit although there is the rule um sorry, sorry i know you there is there is the rule where the italians where they can only come on in advance in the first turn when they're defending, and that might be something that's easily transferable to some of the other. Um, yeah, something like that is definitely easier because it doesn't have a piece of terrain in it, of yeah. course. But it does still rely on the attacker defense scenarios, which again, in many tournaments, are not used. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be, you know, equal, equal side scenarios. But I suppose it's down to the tournament organizers if they want. Can I just do a quick straw poll? Um, we're talking about tournaments versus. Um, more um, background, historical based games. How many of you are tournament players primarily? That's a good question. About. And then the rest of you would be more reenacting and historical campaign based, is that correct? Just casual. Just casual. That was a far better way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, tournament player has a bit of a negative connotation. Uh, we're actually too, too many neckbeards in that. <laughs> that was like, was that 10%, 20%? Yeah, yeah. 10, 15%. Okay. Yeah. 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 Interesting, very good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, it turns out McCarthy was right. You, have a, you uh, write down one of the common troops that your enemy ha has, and uh, once per game you can. Uh, but when they do a like, morale test, you could sabotage it. But it has a slim chance of that working. Or, back, or, or, can, backfire, yeah, or can backfire heavily on you, yeah. making your opponent better. Yes, something about paranoia, yeah. Yeah, something idea, about... Yeah, uh, the idea being as a communist in the, in the opposing army. I mean, something about the paranoia, paranoia thing. Yeah. Spies. Reds under the beds. Bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it more of an American? Yeah. Well, maybe not, not yet. Very, very late war kind of thing. And it gets more like, oh, the, who's the enemy exactly? We, we've had 20 minutes on, on there, so we'll, we'll come back to this. So keep, keep your minds thinking about um, special rules, um, national special rules for Uncovered. I just want to give you the opportunity to ask a few questions of your own. Yes, before we run out of time. Yes. Chap at the back. Yeah, 
dinosaur use. Uh, you had germs have the, I think it was a Guerre model or something. So you're talking about stuff like the Garan. Right. The Garan. Yeah. The fact that it has clip fed as opposed to yeah. bolt action. It, the American's current special rule feels good for that. And it did become a property of semis, assault rifles, and automatic. Uh, automatic rifles? Yeah. That would also boost a couple of the other smaller nations who struggle because they have a very specific rule. <laughs> uh, is there any other nation that would have units entirely equipped with that kind of rifle as opposed to bolt action, or a mix of...? Well, that would certainly be a mix. I mean, the, the, the Gewehr 43 wasn't widespread. Um, yes, I'm thinking the, the Americans is like... The SVD, SVT 40, um, the Soviets, um, but that's not all the way through the war. Um, and again, that's not widespread. It's always the Moisin Nagantes, by far the most populous. So I suppose maybe some units in some armies yeah. where, it, or settings or historical, but where you kind of go, the majority of troops would have, yeah. you know, not both tactical rifles. It always feels a little bit uh, reducing the effectiveness of a lot of the units that have had some of them in the, in the mixing pot, as it were. Well, I think that, that although the Americans benefit from the Garand, it's not just about the weapon, it's about their, their doctrine of firing their way in. And I think that's where a lot of the national rule comes from, rather than it just being the weapon. Because you're quite right, there are other um, similar weapons in other armies, but I think that plus their aggressive doctrine is the thing that really gives them that rule. Yeah, we, we, because we apply to the to the VAR as well, uh, so that it, yeah, it's not just the weapon. Yeah. Kind of to, to add to that sort of, uh, I've got a, a house rule in my local group. I take uh, NKVD for my Soviets and they've all got SVTs because they, they, they take the nice weapons for themselves. Um, and I, I've agreed with, with the with the organizers and other people that I pay one point a model and I get the American rule for that, for that unit only. So nice house rule? Could be made into a official. Talk. I'm a, mainly a Japanese player, uh, which are mainly, well, more towards melee or getting in close. Um, I was just thinking, what is the thought behind making those ex uh, same costs as, say, a Gurkha squad? We get the Gurkha squad half all your melee attacks when they're in combat with you. Is that bad experience? Yeah. <laughs> One squad of Gurkhas took out uh, three squads of uh, maxed out melee Japanese. Just because it went from ten attacks down to five attacks, and they're veterans, so if I do hit, I need to. to so, kill so what, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> what was the thought about making them the same costing? Why do Gurkhas get scale blighters, and yet Japanese who are running at you don't? Uh, no, just Japanese. So good. Japanese have to do with quantity rather than. Uh, I mean, how many? We, the Gurkhas from which supplement? Is this? Uh, this is from. It's not, it's not the basic Gurkhas in the. Just the main army, but then also. The main uh, army. Uh, my friend was saying that you could also have uh, Maori, so you could have Maori Gurkhas, which again, <laughs> can't be attacks, and then if you damage them, you have to re roll that again. Because I, I think in, a, in one of the latest supplements there was some issues with points and Gurkhas and maybe the Maori, uh, which we addressed in, we're going to address in the, in the next errata yeah. document. So there, there is something that, but if you tell me it's from the actual, the main, the, the armies of Great Britain then, and the Commonwealth, they cost the same as long as the police troops? Gurkhas? Really? No, no. they cost more. They, 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 they are the veterans, they, they must be better. They, they must be more expensive. Yeah, but well, they had all I think it was in the desert. Or desert. Yeah. desert or Not many Japanese in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> but the Gurkhas, yeah. No, I think yeah, the, the ones in the in, in the book, I I hope and I think they should be balanced in terms of points values. They should be more expensive, man, man for man, than the Japanese, than the standard Japanese troops. But yeah, the ones in the, the, the one particular supplement, I think we are aware there's a, a point a point issue with some. I don't know if it's the Maori or, or the Gurkhas or both. 
Yeah, we're working on the uh, errata at the moment, so right now, that'll be pretty soon and you'll see that come through. Yeah. Over in the corner. Can you tell us anything about Python 3? Yes, there's going to be one. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have ponies in it. Yeah, ponies. Yeah. Little ponies. Little ponies, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, if you look at this oh, chair, ponies, not ponies. Okay. I've been given a chair with unicorns on, so clearly it's a, give it's a giveaway. It's his chair. So when we released version two, we immediately started work on version three. And it's the way of games designers, you immediately start work on the next edition. Um, yeah, when that comes to fruition. Yeah, obviously the first place you'll hear it will be the Warlord newsletter, but um, we've had a, a lot of questions about that, but no, no time soon. And it's also because, frankly, nobody's in a hurry, the game seems to be yeah. fine. <laughs> it's not broken in any, you know, like, oh my god, we need to fix this, is that, so there's no... Yeah, all, the, all, the develop, all the development work leads us to, that it would be a tweak on an existing game system rather than an overhaul. Um, is the, is the golden goose thing, isn't it? Yeah. Shall we kill this <laughs> risk to kill the golden goose? Yeah, maybe not. But you do want to innovate. But. Have you ever thought of doing a, a supplement or some kind of rules for just a World War One version of the bolt action game? Yes, we uh, we had a manuscript at one point, um, and that was prior to uh, one of the recent anniversaries. Um, and in the end, we decided not to go ahead with it because we'd have to develop a completely new range of miniatures. Uh, and to do that in time, it, there was a lot of work there. Um, <coughs> and our experience is that World War One is nowhere near as popular as World War Two, uh, and that actually you're probably going to get more uh, return on the investment for doing something post World War Two than you are World War One. So yeah, we, we we have we have looked at World War One. We have looked at beyond uh, World War Two. Obviously, we did Korea, but you know we have people asking us today about you know Arab Israeli, India Pakistan, the Falklands. Uh, the list is endless. And as, as a business, we just need to look at what the the most popular will be. Um, often our that's our thought process, but occasionally it'll just be, oh, we're so passionate about this one thing, we've got to make it, and everybody will love it because we made it. Uh, but primarily, it's uh, from a business perspective. But if I, if I may add, on the on games design, the there was the classic comment of, oh, World War One is boring. You just you know you, you run at machine guns and get killed by artillery in in, in no man's land. They're gonna go. Well, we don't focus on that. I mean, if we were to do it, we would be going you know trench raids and you know, not, not something a bit more. Or maybe different parts of the war where there was a bit more movement, not literally on the, you know, <laughs> let, let's hide yeah. in the trench and shell each other for an hour. Like, <laughs> yeah. Trench foot, that'd be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we play a game, um, of, a version of Firefight, which, uh, we, in which we take very small teams and um, play it through trench network. And it works very, very well for World War II. And some kind of package that had a set of trenches that could be opened up to make all kind of terrain with only a few soldiers in each army might be a really nice just sort of starter set looking at World War One, um, which which would be possibly good for use in, in the majority of it could be then moved into your bolt action so it's more like a scenery set with a, an additional small game I'll never say never, but I wouldn't hold your breath. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we have sorry, we have this project called Playing with Single Men, it? which oh, is basically <laughs> just really <laughs> trying to have you know, a single man for man, but that's again, it's, it's a big, yeah, it's a big thing, isn't it? Uh, a big change. Uh, can we ever expect to see a late post liberation flight French set theatre selector with domestic? Uh, production uniforms and kit and stolen panthers, stuff like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's direct. <laughs> a seat policy. Uh, I, I don't know if it, that's covered in any of the 
selectors so far, but they're going to be very, very eclectic. Uh, if we were to do um, a more focused campaign book on that area, then yes, possibly, but I, th I think that's very, very niche. Machine gun teams, they're priced at 50 points each. A five-man squad, about 50 points, was that more firepower, it's more maneuverable. Is there any chance of looking at the points for them? Make five, them five riflemen, 50 points. One LMG, 50 points. The only advantage of the LMG really is range, isn't it? Because if you look at the British, that's six shots they'll get instead of the five. The disadvantage as well, the LMGs, you can get taken out of the shot. And again, that could be something that we need to look at. The old thing that the, the sniper is able to take out a team all the time with a single shot is a bit. I think there's more wrong with the sniper there than the, the that's thing. That's the Kennedy magic bullet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the rationale there was that it, it was more to do with artillery and, and mortars, the fact that you're actually hitting the, the ammunition. Uh, but still, it was a bit far fetched. Uh, so it was like, no, really? So probably taking away that ability from the snipers would be better than starting to tinker with the with the, with the machine gun. Maybe more firepower. I mean, yeah. I always try to, before changing the rules, I think a good way to do it is like, add one dice to the shot. Is it worth it now? Because, I mean, obviously, we all agree that if it was a thousand shots, it would be worth it. So there must be a point where people go practice. Because they're, they're iconic them. in World War II, the machine gun team. But yes. It, you know, and we have tried giving them extra suppression, extra extra pins when, when they hit things. It's just that they spread so much. It's very easy to swing from, yeah. oh, these are useless, to, oh my god, I have lots of these, I'm a German player, and your army is all pinned, and <laughs> you don't go anywhere. So it's very difficult to control that. So I'm in favor of rather maybe take away the Fimica sniper, maybe add a shot to the thing and see how things balance out. Yeah. While we're on that subject, how do people feel about flamethrowers? Because they are utterly prevalent in the tournament scene. At least they're Times have used a flamethrower, and you go to hit, and you're on one, and then, okay, so do you run out? One. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. well, they've been hit with sticks several times, so, you know, it's like, hit, stick. <laughs> Sooner or later. The fact that there's not been a sharp intake of breath leads me to, te leads me to believe that you're right. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know, but you lose a couple of rounds trying to get them into range to do something. Unless they're vehicle mounted. Unless they're on jeeps, yeah, but yeah. They're very specific for tournaments because you keep them in a jeep or a truck and then that is your your counter essentially to the enemy flamer. Mm -hmm. You just both run up your flamers to win a specific point, get your flamer out of your vehicle and climb. Um, but then the, the enemy can do the exact same thing for you, so it just ends up... Yeah, and I think so that they, they balance each other out quite nicely. And, and it's countered often with just ambush, frankly. You have a, you know, something light that can take out one, you know, like a light at a tank gun on a, on, a, on a Greyhound, or it's like waiting for it and going, yeah, okay, come out. <laughs> just, my, my local tournament limits to one flamethrower per army based on that they were actually fairly rare, uh, even in the theatres where they were more widely used, you don't get two or three of them all at once, you get one. Yeah. And for the LMG, just uh, I play the Juggernaut rule, which is LMG infantry squads give up one extra bin, but it doesn't work on vehicles, so I think that sort of negates the, the throwing up pins on everyone. Unless you've taken, like, I mean, for Americans, you can take three LMGs teams in one slot, so te potentially they could push out uh, two pins to three units. But again, I think, I think that makes them more worthwhile for the points, because I mean, the, the five man unit. Make yeah, but is the answer, <laughs> we're going back in several, is the answer an extra shot and take away the, the auto kill from the sniper rather than out rules? So that would be taking away rules, as opposed to adding rules, which is always nice. <laughs> like fewer rules, fewer exceptions, does it get better? Yeah. Uh, what sort of changes would be necessary to both action system to put it into the epic scale? Because it's less generic than the black powder and pipe shot systems by its very nature. So what sort of major changes would have to happen? Well, the, the big one is units of vehicles, obviously, because at the moment vehicles in bolt action are single unit, one dice, one one thing. But and I, I often play with the with the Perry twins on the twelve by eight table, and they they're like. 
Oh, we have 30 dice per side. This game is broken. It doesn't work. <laughs> and you go, uh, yeah, the, ra the range of the weapons is completely wrong. The movement is wrong. Uh, so rescaling in the case of Epic, so changing, maybe, I don't know, it would, it would depend on what table you, you design it for, but units of vehicles would be the first thing, for them, which is like, and, and units of vehicles are tricky if you keep the facing, the damage facing, you know, my vehicles have this, you know, hit me in the side, which is very World War II, you want the get behind a vehicle to hit them, but then the moment it's the unit of vehicles, then your rules start to go, <laughs> right, three vehicles are facing that way, one is facing that way, uh, which one is... So, you know, my experience of trying to write units for units of vehicles in bolt action, and I kind of go, yeah, that would, you probably would have to go more, you know, more generic. You probably would have to sacrifice the side, the front and side of the, of the vehicles and just go, yeah, well, we don't have that level of details because how you do that. So that, that's a big thing. Then there's the peak in the army thing, which is a completely different, uh, what scale is it, company level? You're, you're effectively you know. changing the game entirely, and I don't yeah. think it will be bolt action at that point. Yeah. That's not to say that we are doing any of this. <laughs> <laughs> no plans to do Epic World War II. I've be, be been talking about it for ages. Yeah. 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 So you speak up, I can't hear you. I want the bolt action system. One thing that's great for the time is the reaction, even if it's um, beneficial. The what, sorry? The reaction fire drill. Oh. Oh. In the sense that, um, even when it works tonight, my favourite, I still don't like it, in the sense that you've got something charging at you. Uh, but when you fire it, it's going to be psychically low, they're about to charge at you. So you shoot at them either behind the wall before they come. And that's the thing that gets charged at you. Because you can't really do anything. Yes. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. What, so would your, what would your solution to that be? Well, it's, it's, it's the fact that you've got a unit in a building with plus two cover, they decided to charge at your unit to come out at you. But you're, you know that they're going to charge you because your unit somehow suddenly knows, I'm going to shoot them while they're nice and safe inside the building before they get to you. So you're saying, yeah, you're saying they the should. Yeah, you're yeah, exactly saying they should be shooting. After and the unit leaves come, cover. Yeah, as they come over, yeah. It makes so, sense that they somehow know they're about to charge in that building. So they're shooting them while they're sat down in the building. Before, yeah. Rather than when they run to So, the, I mean, the, if you are in that situation, your unit has not activated yet, there's a threat of a charge for a unit. The solution is going into ambush. Because then you can stop the movement at any point you like. Yeah. So, so you can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's by ambush. It's not used a lot, but you know, that gets rid of the, well, they're in a building, I hit them in the building, no, I'll wait until they come out and hit them yeah. in the open. It also gets rid of the six inches, you know, cannot shoot. So, you know, it, it's, if you, if you know, if you, I mean, if you have already activated, then yes, absolutely, then, then you can, but on the other end, you cannot react fire if you're already activated, so, so that's not a problem. Perfect rules. <laughs> Just in <an> ambush. <laughs> Link to that in conflict, there's quite a few different reaction rules than to run away or be able to run to cover and all those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. Are any of those interesting in Bob Action? Does that add a level of complexity to it? It's not really uh, Personally, um, I find rules that trigger movement in as a reaction very difficult to, to get to work. I mean, even, even Recky, if you look at the amount of a rat and FAQs that we have, like, I don't know, I don't know what percentage, but it's a big percentage of the uh, rat and FAQs are about Recky, because Recky is the one that breaks the rule, he's the one that actually activates movement as part of the movement of, uh, of the activation, somebody else's activation, so... Unless you're Gurkhas. So? Unless you're Gurkhas, which carry... Unless you're Gurkhas. Buy more Gurkhas! <laughs> <laughs> Just one second more, like... It's an important bolt action thing because in some games you go right okay I need to come out and see you before I can do stuff to you but if you wait until the end of the turn and that's your last the last thing you do that turn then you don't know which one of you is going to activate next so that's kind of the point of I can risk coming out and if I'm lucky I'll activate before you so is that the most important activation of course that's the classic you know do I want to activate then before activating something else but you can have the double come out and charge you or, or as we keep saying 
The assumption there was that there were very two very different types of terrain. Mm -hmm. A ruin, you're right, always assume is two dimensional. It is flat. Yeah, it's an area of terrain. There is no height. Yeah, and, and well, a, a building, an intact building, then you go into floors and areas like that, and ele elevation. But of course, then in reality is people make terrain it's very often is not is now either is something in between where you have those rooms that those sort of buildings bombed out buildings which kind of still have a bit of floor and naturally everybody I want to put the sniper on the second bit of the ruin on the top kind of thing and you kind of go is this a building no so actually the sniper is not there the sniper is, is on the ground right and, and it gets a bit yeah a bit. So on that note, when you're measuring line of sight and range from um, buildings, let's say, so let's say my sight was on the, the first floor of the building, so not... Okay, so it's an intact building, building so... Intact building. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do you measure range horizontally, or should you measure from the window? I the think ground? the rule book does say, I believe, let's check, but if I think it does say that you measure from the opening you're firing from, both so line measure, of sight so and... So you uh, measure three yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it says that. But. I was going to say, don't quote me on this. No, I, unfortunately, you, you can quote me on this. <laughs> 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 so you're right, it's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does say that. So it was very much, when you were writing the rule set, it was very much a sort of a two dimensional battlefield, with the exception of buildings, was the idea. Well, the, I mean, there's hills as well, but there's no rules for hills or something like that. It's all because, for me, it's a real line of sight is for me the best way to do this kind of stuff because it's very simple to write, it's very simple to understand and more importantly is very cool to check is that you know when you have the ability of going because when you're doing that you're looking at at the battle from the point of view of your soldier yeah so you, you kind of see what this is which brings you in brings you into the thing which I, I think is it's great, and we have to make exceptions. We have to make the you know the the uh, that's the rain rule effectively is the exception where you go, yeah. But you have to have that rule of an area of terrain. You have to go, you know, infinite highs. You can't see through because not everybody has the gorgeous tables that people have here, etc. So you know when people play with just you know this is my this is a building, that's a wood, etc. Then you have to go right. This has to block line of sight because it, so. You, unfortunately, you have to put the abstractions and put them aside. Otherwise, I would always go with real of sight. I, 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 it's my favorite system for, for many reasons. Mostly because it brings you in, you know, brings you at the, the level of the soldiers. Well, let's have another straw poll. Who prefers line of sight in Alessio's way? <laughs> Actually getting down and looking in Alessio's mm. way. Laser pointer. You win. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the other one, the, the top down, very board gamey version. Of you know, like it doesn't matter. I got down to those height levels, and thing. I've done that in other games as well. And it works, is more abstract, and I think is more suited for some of the game for war gaming. Where, yeah, the, we like the toy soldiers, we like the, the cinematic action, etc. I, I think I prefer that. But I realize obviously it's a matter of taste, but I'm glad you guys like it because I, I like that. Uh, we're coming towards the end now, so let's if you've got anything you specifically want to ask, then now would be a good time. I just wondered, um, which aspect of the game do you most often get questions about? Like, which rules confuse people most often? The recce rule. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, were the specific which rules specifically? Which or rules, yeah. Do you get specific questions about most? most. Recce is a big one. Recce is a... Uh, because again, the, the game has a certain logic to it, which is uh, you do a thing when you activate, and then Oh, I want to do something else, I want to interrupt, that's next turn. So the logic is, yeah, if you want to do two things, do it last in the turn and hope that you get to do it again. So that's the, the inner logic. But then we couldn't resist giving the interrupt, the, the old role of the... the, the <coughs> in second edition, we already toned down a bit the fact that, you know, you cannot wreck if you're activated, which makes a big difference. At least it kind of keeps the logic of, you know, if you have a dice, that's it, you're done. <laughs> 
but yeah, the recce is definitely a big one. What else? We get lots of uh, questions about. Well, machine guns we get a lot of. They're not good enough, but there's not a problem confusing. It's about it's been LMGs. It's been power. LMGs. Yeah, it's about level of power. There's more balance than uh, clarity. Um, buildings obviously unavoidably are a complicated part of the because obviously it's very abstract. The moment you go abstract and in, when you kind of remove your models and put them aside, and then you have to have a lot of rules to where are the models? Well, uh, near the windows or not, depending. So it's almost like a separate part of the of the rules where you have to abandon some of that real line of sight because it's all very abstract. And it applies to the unity transports as well. Similarly, is the you know, unit here? No, they're not. Put them in, put them out. That really cannot be as clear as the models are where they are. And, you know, Anything else? Okay. Well, nobody talks to me about rules. What right <laughs> the same. <laughs> Chuck in the corner. Um, just a question on what your thoughts would be on one of the suggestions that people often make is a conflict rather than being a standalone rule set to be a supplement that just adds on to bold action. So it just adds special rules, adds units, so you can use it as an addition. Um, obviously, you said earlier, there's no plans for conflict to be released in one. But I just want to know what your thoughts on that direction, uh, whether that's, do you think that's a good idea, or whether you think it should have its own complete process? Um, well, I can tell you that it's going to have its own rule set. It's, it, that is the case. We're not going to make it a supplement. We have discussed it, because that has come up in our, in our meetings as to whether it should be a subset of Bolt Action, uh, whether a, just a campaign book. But we just think there's a, uh, a lot of opportunity out there uh, and a lot of love for conflict. That, uh, we don't think we're doing it, give it a level of respect that it needs to do that. So, um, you know, it, it will be its own game. It probably be based on Bolt Action 3, 2, um, is it going to be you know, the same, but just with walkers now? Uh, chances are it'll be familiar, but it's own game. Can I ask a no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that was um, if it is its own reset, will it be updated in line with Bolt Action? Because one of the problems with conflict that I have right now that stops me engaging with it is a lot of rules are version one, and so there's a difficulty that you've got additional special rules. You've got familiar rules, and then you've got rules that are familiar but different, and you end up having you have to remember three different things, and which is why the I, supplement is always my favourite. When I say see. when I say that it's going to be familiar, I'm thinking about things like the dice activation system. Beyond that, it could be wildly different, uh, or and again, because there are no firm plans and that it hasn't been written yet, it could mirror. But then layer on things like walkers, layer on things like you know, the Gribbly monsters, etc. Um, no plans on that. But we, we have discussed the supplement idea, but we felt that that would be uh, very easy to do, but not really give it the respect it deserves and the, the resource that we'd like to put towards it. Yeah, I want to just kind of echo that with current bolt action and current conflict 47 being similar enough that you want to play them both, but there being so many tiny differences that it gets very confusing when you play both. I, I personally see it that Bolt Action is here doing its own thing. And this will be kind of parallel but have enough differences that it's familiar but a game system that will be set apart well enough for you not to get confused by those nuances. And also because you know, Conflict was developed alongside Bolt Action 1, hasn't been upgraded to um, Bolt Action 2. Uh, so who knows what's going to happen there, but our, our current feeling is that we want, to, we want it to be a standalone game with enough familiarity to know that it's a Warlord game. I think we'll take the last question. Could we expect to see uh, Warlord and rules for an AMX40, perhaps as an April Fool's thing? For what, sorry? AMX40, the duck tank, ah. as is on the t-shirt. <laughs> um, no plans, that's not to say we're, never. We're always looking for fun stuff to do, but uh, no, certainly, certainly not in our plans at this stage. I thought of another quick one. Uh, when you asked about the rules that are contentious, this is a rule that is not contentious because it's not in the game, but people keep asking this question about hand grenades. They're kind of like, why don't you have hand grenades? Hand grenades! I was like, well, do you have rules for it? 
we do have hand grenades in the sense that close combat is fairly lethal. So there's a way of kind of saying, because that also the fact point blank range makes you better. Why is that? Well, probably because you're chucking grenades. So very abstract because we did again try the old lob HEs from normal infantry. Everybody's got HEs and just the game slows down and gets them. It, it we just went, nah, let's keep it abstract. Both sides have hand grenades, they're lobbing each other, uh, grenades at each other in combat. That's why people die a lot in combat and stuff. But that's, we, we've just decided, don't go there. Okay. Yeah, they're all folded into the firefight rules effectively rather than having their own level of granularity, which just has a little bit more flavour but will slow the game down a little. Yeah. And add more complexity, which is something that we're, we're keen not to do with Bolt Action. We like to keep the flow. Well, thank you very much for your time. Hopefully it's been um, engaging and uh, informative. Uh, and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, thank you very much.